now turning to this evening's main news, those vigils across the north in protest at the killings by dissident Republicans that we've seen in recent days and the continuing reaction to that violence. We're joined from Belfast uh, by Frankie Gallagher from the Ulster Political Research Group, which is a loyalist organization that offers political advice and guidance to the uh, the Ulster Defence Association. Thanks for joining us on the programme, Mr Gallagher. What, what did you think of, of what you saw on the streets of Northern Ireland today, the numbers that turned out and what, what people were saying? I think it's short notice. It was powerful. I think the numbers turned up in Belfast was unbelievable. It must have been between six and 8,000 people there. Uh, and, and the feeling was quite palpable. Uh, people do not want to go back to what these people uh, are presenting to us this weekend. So uh, your, your judgment, your assessment will be that, is that there is, re there is no support of any significance within the community for a return to violence? Absolutely not. Um, people do not want to go here. The people have spoke loud and clear in terms of uh, what they want. They do not want violence. I think the Irish people have spoken, the Ulster people have spoken, the British people have spoken, and even in Europe people are talking about this. The, these people are not wanted and they have to understand that loud and clear. And I think today's vigils organised by the Irish Congress of Trade Unions was a great initiative and it sent the message very clear that the people on this island do not want these people representing them or talking for them. Well now you also today met the Sinn Féin Mayor of Belfast, Tom Hartley, and he said afterwards, after meeting you, that he was very reassured after listening to what you had to say. I suppose about the mood within the Loyalist community. Why do you think he took that reassurance? Well, obviously in, in, in 35, 38 years of violent conflict and a, a very dirty war, uh, or dirty conflict, you know, there's been tit for tats, there's been reactions. People don't want that no more either. And I think what we tried to do, even though we have political and ideological differences, we have a lot of common issues that we've got to sort out in terms of economy, which is the people of the Republic are faced with as well. We've got to get down to these grassroots and these common issues that we've got to work out together uh, and, and work as one community to try and resolve these. And I think he was reassured in terms that no matter what happens, even though you can't have 100% uh, security, that we reassured him that our constituency was fully behind what the people of Northern Ireland are saying, loud and clear. And, and the leadership as well that was given by the, uh, Martin McGuinness and Peter Robison at the OFM, DFM, was quite phenomenal as well. So they raised the bar in terms of what leadership is in Northern Ireland. And we felt as well that we had to step up to that mark. So for, I mean, I'm thinking particularly of people living in, in Catholic communities in Northern Ireland, perhaps some of them fearing uh, the, the danger of retaliation, um, perhaps certainly from what you say, not something that will be organised or sanctioned uh, at, a, at a leadership level, but somebody somewhere deciding to take things into their own hands. Yeah. That, that, that is a fear right across Northern Ireland. I, I believe that... I, th I think that the, the fact that people have lived in a, in a, a peaceful society and absence, the absence of violence over this last uh, number of years, I think people started to forget what the horrible days were like, and this brought an awful shock back. And it, wasn't, it isn't just the, the people in the Republican communities and the nationalist communities that felt that fear. I think a lot of people in the Protestant, Unionist and Loyalist communities felt the same, that, oh God, we're coming back to this, we don't want it. So, you know, you can't... You can't legislate for individuals or you can't legislate for 100% for, for, for security. But what we can do is we can reassure uh, the other community that our intentions are, are good, our intentions are honourable, and we want to work together. Very and good. we've been made welcome in a lot of Republican communities this last year, this last two years, and we're learning about Irish republicanism, we're learning about Irish nationalism, and I think they're learning about what it is to be British for me because we don't understand each other right. and I think that coming together of communities has helped uh, stabilise our society at the moment in the face of these people who are trying to, to, trying to ruin what this we have. clearly at this time of crisis. Frankie Gallagher, thanks very much indeed for talking to us on 6-1.